Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Character Creator 4. Now, it was just released the end of last week by Real Illusion. This is a tool along the lines of, say, Daz or Poser or Epic Games MetaHumans uh, for creating digital characters. And we're going to start things off straight away uh, with a hands-on demonstration, then we'll come back later on and check out what it is like, what's in the new Character Creator 4 release. So we're going to start things off. Uh, you can start with a base model mesh. Uh, and the problem with me going this route is YouTube. So these are, uh, unfortunately, what is the word? Naked. And generally, uh, it's not something that the YouTube algorithms like too much. So I'm going to start off uh, with a uh, Character Creator 4 format character, Camilla, and we can go from there. So again, you could start from basically a uh, base human or base, uh, so get female or male mesh. Uh, you can also bring in your own assets. That's one of the big things with Creature Creator 4. By the way, you can also work with things like horses and dinosaurs and so on. Uh, so you're not just limited to um, digital humans. So we see here, this is a base mesh. You got some some uh, pretty nice skin texturing going on here. Um, let's bring it down so we can check out the face. Uh, you have fine-tuned control over every aspect of it, uh, but where you basically work with it the most is by using a series of morphs. So if we want to change the way this person works, we could come in and start applying uh, morphs on top. So let's go in here, take a look at some of the essential morphs. So you see four characters. So if we wanted to, we could literally just mix in. So this is Camilla we're starting with. Let's give uh, Camilla the Kevin treatment. And uh, giving Camilla the Kevin treatment may not be the best idea you've ever seen. So you notice I've dropped this morph into the world. And now what we have is a slider available. And I can add more Kevinness. So there we go. And yeah, that, that's a Kevin morph. And all the things that you're working with here can be done with these morphs. So we've got a number of different aspects of morphing going on. So we could change the um, eyelashes. Double click there. It adds that morph to the character. And now we're controlling the eyelashes, which actually didn't seem to do anything. Uh, let's go with uh, central body morphs. And we'll use another example. So for example, we could come down here and pick the body toning. So we we'll pick body toning. I'll come back here. Let's zoom out so we can see the results of our body toning. All right. By the way, it's alt and then uh, buttons to move things. By the way, what you're seeing here is a 30-day free trial. So if you want to go ahead and check this out, I do believe it is Windows only, unfortunately. But here you can see uh, we can change the toneless level of the body. At the same time, we can also change the body size. So if you want to change the amount of body fat on this character, you can easily do so. Now, what you'll notice here is as I'm changing things, we're also starting to clip through the body. And that may not be ideal. I, I actually will say straight out that it's not ideal. Now, the cool thing here is actually working with the posing tools in this are really, really simple. So for example, I can come up here, posing tool, edit pose. It's going to bring me up a, I, so I can do a, a inverse kinematic or forward kinematic movement. And I can just grab the actual uh, thing I want to handle and just move it. And you'll notice again, it's, Inverse kinematics in action here. Uh, so really, uh, reposing things is very, very simple. Now, at the same time, uh, if you want to come in and use animations, well, you have a ton of animation options here as well. So let's go on down here. Let's take a look. So we've got under actor. I don't want actor. I want animation. Where are you, animations? Um, animation. All right. So here we go. Got a variety of different animations available. Uh, what are we going to do? Let's do a motion plus animated acting female. All right. So here we got, uh, we'll put a posing animation on her. So just drop that in there and then boom, she now has that animation applied to her. So it does make, uh, rigging and, uh, putting animations on characters very simple. If you can create a character in a video game, you can create one using this tool. Now, of course, this tool is aimed at um, fitting into your media pipeline, so you can export this out to a variety of different formats. You can see them up here, actually. You can export out to USD format, OBJ format, which, by the way, uh, generally does not support animations, but you can bring it out as FBX. You can also bring in your own base characters, and with the Character Creator 4 release, uh, it is able to recognize more industry standard things like uh, Mixamo, Blender Rigs, etc., and automatically work with them. Uh, on top of the animation tools, the posing tools, everything we've seen there, you've got a number of different tools down here. You've even got full physics support. The physics engine is actually built in here, so if you have... 
I'm not going to do so. Uh, but if you have clothing in place, you can do cloth physics, etc. Um, you've got control over the material. As you may notice up here, you also have export support to Substance Painter. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and uh, work on the textures in Substance Painter, if you have that as your part of your pipeline, uh, you do have that integration here as well. You also have Insta LOD support for handling multiple different uh, LODs. So if you need to remesh it, merge the materials down so that it'll work better in a real-time environment, all of those options are available to you as well. Um, you've got editing over the skin and the makeup. In this particular release, we also got some uh, tool changes to uh, the facial expressions. So if you want to do uh, facial morphs, animations, and rigs, you have fine-tuned control over everything. So let's her eye. And control that there. You can uh, import uh, FBX frame sequences to do this if you have it uh, rigged. But here you can see, obviously, you have a ton of control over uh, all aspects of the face. So here we go with the tongue. So we can have the tongue upness. So you have a, an absolute huge amount of control. Uh, it, they upgraded the amount of uh, facial controls in uh, the CC4 release uh, as well. Um, and that's kind of the gist of it. Again, we, we saw with a base mesh, we didn't do much with it. We didn't create one from scratch, but obviously you could come in and you just basically start doing these morph mix-ins to make things work. We can also do a, a bit of dress up. You could bring in your own aspects as well, but let's go ahead and do, let's bring in some kind of an accessory. So gloves. All right, let's see if we have any gloves available. Now, I don't have a ton of content. I'm basically just using uh, the freebie stuff that's available with it. There is a ton of freebie stuff in here, but applying things into your scene is generally as simple as boom. And there we now have a gloved hand. Now, I'm not sure why it's, I'm not sure if that's the design of the glove so that the open arm or not. And I also don't know how to apply the glove to the other arm if that is an option uh, but you get an idea of the capabilities here now the nice thing with this tool again is you'll notice here we can import animations you saw when we were doing the facial stuff you could bring in fbx animation so you can slot this into your existing pipeline uh, we have control over things like for example makeup so we give her a ton of makeup and let's uh turn her into a tribal warrior instead and boom boom boom, boom. and come on hurry up so if you don't want to get into something like Substance Painter for doing your uh, your work in that regard, like in terms of texturing and, and surfaces and such, you have uh, the store available to you. That's kind of one of the nice things about use. Oh, no, we went into, I don't know why it undid all of my other stuff. Um, and maybe it's because I did a full, I don't know. But we had a, a moment of nudity. Hopefully uh, YouTube doesn't mind that one too much. Uh, but... Yeah, that, that's kind of how this whole thing works. Again, you bring in, you want to start adding hair. Let's give her this um, this hairstyle now on top. And come on, come on. Uh, one last thing to, to point out. Uh, I'll show you this as soon as the hair comes in for our uh, monstrous creation. Where is my hair? Where's my hair? Where's my hair? Okay, there it is. Uh, yeah, she's, ooh, we crashed. Okay, now that that's just the perfect time to end the demonstration aspect of it. Uh, so yeah, if you're me, you're capable of crashing any demo, any program while you're uh, doing a live demonstration, as I just illustrated. So anyways, that is Character Creator 4. I do have to admit, that was actually the first time I have crashed it. So it has generally been pretty stable. If you do want to go ahead and check it out, there is a free trial available. Um, it's, again, a full character creation solution for designers to generate, easily generate, import, and customize stylized uh, realistic characters for use with iClone, Maya, Blender, Unreal Engine, uh, Unity, or any other 3D tool. Connects industry-leading pipelines with one system for 3D character creation, animation, rigging, asset management, look dev rendering, and interactive design. Uh, the cool thing, again, is you can easily bring tools into it, or you can buy stuff from their shop. Uh, you use just basic morphing to make things uh, work however you wish. There is a ton of functionality in this guy way beyond what I'm showcasing here and the other thing is if you do check this out there are 2,000 plus items uh, that you can start with you know clothing items and so on you can also obviously bring in your own stuff and some of the new stuff here is this auto importation so if you're working with uh, well it's competitor Daz 3D or Blender's MetaHuman Rig, Mixamo Animations, 3D Studios Max, Maya, Unreal Engine or Sketchfab there are auto importation tools in so this thing slots very nicely into an existing pipeline. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 
Character Creator 4 was just released. Uh, so some of the things that we've got here, uh, upgraded with 140 blend shapes from 40 scan for refined motion capture, face puppeting, lip syncing, and so on. Uh, you've got the new Expressions Profile Editor for doing a ton of uh, facial animation uh, controls. Uh, we've got... Um, any biped rig models can be imported, characterized, facial rig in character creator. New features now make any character compatible with thousands of motion assets. Ready for natural lip sync, motion capture, and animation control. And iClone. iClone is their competing com product. Uh, not their competing, but their other product. It was uh, just updated as well. It's more of a rendering solution. Uh, CC characters can also be optimized for low poly, high performance crowd simulation, AR, VR, or the metaverse. Again, auto importing is a big part of this particular release. So if you're using any one of those tools, it will bring it in uh, the character creation or character creator animation feature lets character designers see living characters inside a character creator helping to check imported character rigs enhance clothes uh, enhancing clothing skin weights and physics testing facial expressions uh, there's a new turntable in there so yeah, that is uh, the uh, release for Character Creator 4. Quite a bit in there. Again, the one thing I do really like is that they've kind of made it more of a slot into the existing pipeline. So if you do have an FBX to import or you're bringing in Mixamo animations or if you use DAS 3D and you have a huge DAS 3D model collection, uh, you should be good to go. Now, uh, if you want to check it out, there is that 30-day trial available. By the way, it does install a hub and then the product. It's about 2 gigabytes all told when you are done. It is sadly Windows 64 only. If you want to go ahead and buy Character Creator, uh, it is available for 250 bucks. Uh, that is not a subscription. That is straight out the cost. Uh, and then we've got iClone, which I believe actually it contains is a super set, but also with rendering tools. But we're not talking about iClone today. We are talking about Character Creator 4. And again, 250 bucks right now uh, to pick that up. Uh, there's also one with added content. Now, on top of that, they have a gigantic store full of assets. So if you need props, characters, etc., hairstyles, etc., uh, they are all available in that store as well. Now, one thing that you're going to want to be aware of, though, is if you're in the world of game development, can you export and use these models legally? And that's where the content license comes in. And for the most part, yes, you can, but there is a caveat, and I will get to that. So uh, with, once you've paid that one time, uh, you can export out uh, royalty-free, authorized for a perpetual license with no time limit, and multiple team members can share it, work with a group. However, if you wish to do embed it in a project, then you need to get into the contact marketing or read the content EULA. And that's the part we are looking at right now. So you can use this in a project, but there is a catch. And the catch I have highlighted in blue. Notice for developers or vendors using Real Illusion or third-party content for mass distribution, including game titles, apps, online services, kiosks, but not limited to various platforms, PC, Mac, blah, blah, blah. To get mass distribution rights for using Real Illusion content, developers and vendors must first register their game or application information with Real Illusion. So you got to contact their marketing team in order to receive the license agreement letter. Please provide information on your project idea. Any additional materials like project prototype, web page, and videos are welcome. So that is definitely one of those things to be aware of. It is a huge deal because uh, you can, um, you'll see the licensing allows you to use this um, grants you a non-exclusive worldwide royalty-free license to export content via either of their products uh, into a variety of different 3D file formats. Uh, but you may then embed them into games or variety projects, etc. But just do be aware, you have to reach out to them. And I, I actually think that this is kind of stupid. Uh, I don't like this agreement requirement. I don't think it should be a deal breaker, but it is definitely one of those things that you're going to want to be aware is out there. So ladies and gentlemen, that there is Character Creator 4. Uh, I, I checked out Character Creator 3 like two or three years ago. It's a pretty major update to it. And one of the major aspects of that update is making it work with existing pipelines, which I do appreciate. But let me know what you think of this. Do you use a competing tool? Do you use, um, you know, Unreal Engine's new MetaHumans? Do you use DAS 3D? Do you use Poser? Or, uh, you know, is there, have you used Character Creator 4 in the past or Character Creator of series in the past? And are there strengths and weaknesses you would recommend to people? Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.